Yo, 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 what's going on, Team Tweeting? I hope you're all super well. Feels weird to be in the hashtag Ask Tweety Land, but this is a football show where you guys send in your football related questions. I do my best to answer them. We don't have Papa Tweety. I think I'm going to do these more so by myself and then put Papa Tweety on every so often so we kind of get different views uh, rather than have Papa Tweety on all the time. So I think this is episode 64. In fact, I almost know it is. Uh, again, this is unedited, lets you guys see a different side of me, different questions. Uh, it's a Q&A, so send in your questions. If you want to ask me anything about football, whether it's your situation, whether it's you, you want my thoughts on anything, this is the show to do it. It's kind of, it's a podcast sort of thing, so we can just have a sit down. You guys can listen to it while you're doing your homework, whatever you want to do while you're in the car. And yeah, we ask, answer three questions usually when I'm by myself. And we kick it on from there. So I've come back from training tonight. Right on me. Oh, I don't know. Um, so three questions. We're going to start off with this one. Because I feel like a lot of people are unsure about this. Should I take the risk overseas to stay in my country or to go pro? Wait, should I stay... <laughs> Sorry, should I take the risk overseas or stay in my country to go pro? Yeah, I read that wrong. It depends, man. I think so many people believe if you want to chase a professional contract and nothing's happening for you in your country right this second, that you have to go overseas and pursue that goal, which can be true. It really depends on a couple of things, I would say. The first one, is your country a good place to go pro in? So for me, I'll talk about Australia because that's what I know. In Australia, I know that with the connections that I have, there's a chance that I could become a professional footballer. If I'm in, I don't know, let's say China, I, I wouldn't even know where to start. So it, it wouldn't make sense to go somewhere like that. Then you've also got to think about visas. Now, if you're a player who has a visa and you're just on a tourist visa or a working visa or whatever, if you want to try and sign a professional contract in the A-League, I wish you luck because visa players, I think you're only allowed three in a squad or maybe four or five it's really not a whole lot so you're then competing with visa players who have played for their national team played at like the top top level so that's an instance where i'd say if you want to pursue your dream of becoming a professional footballer and you're on that visa thing and you don't have a cv like other players do maybe australia is not the best option for you there's a couple of players in the npl who you know, are up to that A League standard, but because they're not Australian citizens, it makes them it makes it difficult for them to really get into a side. So these are things you need to weigh up. Do you have connections in the country you're looking to go to? Do you have cheap accommodation or are you going to be staying in a hotel for four weeks straight and lose all your money straight up? It's it's really a not easy thing and what I would suggest you do is write down a list of benefits and disadvantages. Advantages, disadvantages for staying in your country. So advantages, disadvantages, and then going overseas. Advantages, disadvantages. Write those down and kind of see where your head is at rather than... Because everyone wants to go overseas, man. It's traveling, it's cool, you get to leave home. But sometimes, like for me, I'd love to go overseas now and go back to England, that'd be sick, and really pursue that. But it makes sense for me with everything that's going on to stay in Australia. And maybe in eight months' time, or I don't know, 12 months, 14 months, down the line, I'll go, okay, Australia is not the option. And you reassess, but you're reassessing all the time. So that's my advice to you guys. Think about the situation you're in and what makes sense for you to actually do. Hope I helped at least one of you there. Uh, we're going to use this answer the second one. Why do you want to become a pro? I th this is a great question because I love being truthful with you guys and honest with my uh, answers. I would say number one, ultimate above anything else is doing what I... To, to have the ability to do what I want every day for the rest of my life is something I live by. It's, I, couldn't, I could never picture myself stacking shelves at a supermarket ever again because that's not something I want to do with my life. If I have to do it in order to get me to that goal of becoming a professional footballer, let's say I need funds to go overseas, then yeah, I'll do it. 
But for me, man, to wake up and know you're going to work, which is going to a field and playing football, that's a pretty damn good job and you're earning a living from it. So that's my biggest point. That's why I want to become a pro, to live life. To, <laughs> that's it. And then obviously under that, the money, like that's I guess that's just because people need to live. So that's just standard, I guess. Uh, number two would be fame. I think fame is kind of cool, uh, especially if you're a professional footballer. You have a lot of people to, a lot of people who look up to you, and take a lot of things away from you. And you're seen as an, a role model and as an idol to ki well, to kids and even other players. Um, apart from that, like why why else? Like to play in front of the stadiums, that comes, that's fame though. Like when you're in a stadium playing in front of 40,000 people, like, ah, there's just so many, there's so many different answers. And I want you guys to let me know down in the comments, why do you guys want to become a pro? Or if in your field, I know a couple of people watch who play AFL or cricket or other sports, why do you guys want to become a pro in your field? Or why do you want to exceed in your business or your job or whatever it is? Let me know down in the comments. But that's my answer. That's why I want to become a pro. Last and final question. What can you use as motivation after weeks and weeks of conditioning and training? Oh my goodness, I know that feel, bro. When you're like, when you do so many weeks of conditioning, just, so anyone that doesn't know what conditioning is, I would say it's basically you're conditioning your body to be ready for matches. So I assume this guy's talking about pre-season. So how do you get yourself mentally past like how do you mentally motivate yourself in pre-season to you know run through those 10 kilometers or do those beach sprints now for me uh, it was easier this year than any other year uh, I, I was fighting for my spot I didn't have a spot in any team so I knew that I had to be the standout player every single time now in saying that for since the under 16s to no from the under 18s up until the under 20s I never had to fight for my spot so I guarantee you if you came down and watched our early fitness sessions when I was with Manly United you would have seen I was the last player every single time or close to it now I didn't believe I needed to be super fit because I played as a number 10 the style of play I don't need to be super fit but it just really just doesn't give the right impression to coaches so there's that and to mentally prepare so that's how I mentally prepared myself this time if I were to have to mentally prepare myself another time let's say I was in Manly United how would I do my time again I think having goals there really helps you a lot because once you start to think about your goals why you're doing this once you, once you have that why, it's really going to get you somewhere and it's going to give you that motivation to push to the next level. And if you're going to these training sessions going, oh my God, fitness, then you've already lost the battle. You've already lost it. So the motivation needs to come from what's my why? Why am I here? Why am I coming to the field on a Monday night at seven o'clock to train? Why am I doing this? Oh, because I want to become a professional footballer. So then you kind of revert. Oh, it's Spencer. I thought I heard someone like opening up the door or something. And then you start to reverse engineer your goal to what you're doing right now. And it becomes much easier to get through that struggle. Because I tell you what, when you're doing, I remember so many times running with Pat and I think we did one early on like, a, I don't know what it was, 7am. I thought I was going to vomit. I had wheat bix in my stomach. I thought I was going to chuck it up. Me and Jasper went for two more runs. We pushed ourselves to the absolute limit. And that's what you got to do. I think also I will say having a training partner there helps you so much more. You guys saw when I did that 5 a.m. session quite recently, I had Lucy come down to the field with me and she helped me out. All she was doing, she wasn't doing the fitness. She was just standing there, passing me the ball, telling me how long to go in the time. And she wasn't yelling out words of encouragement. But because someone was there, not telling me but someone was just there it forced me to go that extra mile so if you can find a training partner that's going to help you a ton just make sure that like i've seen people who have training partners and i've done it before myself you go down to the park you have a chat you have a kick and it's like a 
under hour session and you probably did 15 minutes work you may as well just do that 15 minutes work and get out of there if you're going to do that so make sure when you're working you're actually doing it properly if you're doing let's say a fitness drill where you sprint the length of the field jog the side sprint the length jog the side you're pushing each other and trying to overlap each other these are the sorts of things that's going to motivate you easier than just doing it by yourself if you don't have anyone else then yeah you just need to focus on that why why you're doing this and how it's going to progress you in the future always see it as a benefit and a positive on your footballing career and the footballing future focus on like not that day just put that that fast forward motion that i've spoken about before put that into effect and then go out and do your work so that's the three questions done feels good to be back with hashtag r3 let me know down in the comments if you guys wanted to stay i never really know because i i'm looking here it's the last one's got like 900 and 800 views i'm not super like i never really look at views in terms of that but i look at the views and go okay it's not getting as many views you guys aren't interested in it but i don't know if it helps a few of you then i'll keep putting it out maybe we make a second channel for it i don't know let me know down in the comments gonna end it there team tweet i'll sign up make sure you like and subscribe now and join the hashtag on sweet family i'll see you guys in the next video bye